I want to wrap up this module by briefly mentioning a couple of more advanced I.O. techniques, starting with something called Scatter Gather I.O., which is implemented by the system calls Read V and Write V. The idea here is that in a single system call, you can gather data from several buffers, writing it to a file in one atomic operation. So the first argument to write V is an open file descriptor, just a plain old integer file descriptor. The second argument points to an array of IO VEC structures. Each structure in the array specifies a buffer to be written, giving its starting address and its length. Here IO count is three, so there are three such buffers defined. The data is written atomically to the file. By atomic, I mean that the three buffers are guaranteed to end up contiguous and sequential in the file, even if some other process concurrently is appending data to the file. There's also a read V, which reads from the file, scattering the data into multiple buffers, again specified by an array of IO VEC structures, just as we see here. Finally, we'll look at the system called MMAP, which lets you map a file into memory so that you can access it as if it were an array. The first time I encountered this, it felt like pure magic. MMAP takes six arguments. You need an open file descriptor for the file that you want to map. The offset and the length arguments specify which piece of the file you want to map. Offset must be a multiple of the page size. Very often it's zero and you map in the entire file. The first argument can be used in theory to suggest an address at which the mapping should be placed. But commonly this is set to null, allowing the kernel to choose the address. The return value from nmap gives you the address that the file has been mapped at. This is rather like a call to malloc, telling you where the block of memory it's allocated for you has been placed in your address space. The prot argument specifies what you want to be able to do with the mapped in file, and typically it's some combination of prot read and prot write. Finally, the flags argument specifies whether you plan to share the mapping with other processes so that updates to the map region are immediately visible to everyone, or whether you want to keep the map region to yourself. Now earlier in the lesson I showed you how to get random access into a file and do uh, record-oriented updates using lseek, so I thought it might be interesting to just revisit that using mmap. So here's just a sketch of the code. Uh, as before, we're defining a structure to define a record within the file. And here we're defining a pointer called records uh, that is going to point to an array of records as we map the file in. Let's have a look at the rest of the code. Here we are seeking to the end of the file and recording the offset simply to get its size. And then this is um, a key part of this code here. We're mapping the whole file into memory. And the cast on the pointer that's returned from mmap means that records is pointing to an array of record structures. So we are viewing this mapped file as an array of record structures. That makes it very easy for us to update a record. Here we're indexing into that array to get element number one uh, and updating its ID value to be 99. And finally, we uh, sync the mapping back out to the file. So that's quite an elegant way of getting random access into a file. I'm going to revisit our file copy program one last time using mmap. Now the main reason this code looks more complicated is that I've done a proper job on error checking, which of course bulks the whole thing out. Let me point out the key lines here. First, we open the input file. Here, 
we open the output file. Notice that we're using a couple of bitwise ORD symbolic constants to specify the permissions on the file rather than an octal constant. Now we need to know the length of the file so that we know how much to map in. So what we're doing here is we're doing an LSEQ to the end of the file and recording the new value of the file position pointer. Next we map in the entire file capturing the mapped address in the variable src. Scrolling down, the f truncate call, which I haven't covered in detail here, I'll leave you to look at the man page, sets the size of the output file to match the size of the input file. Here, we map the destination file into memory, capturing the mapped address in the variable DST. Scroll down a little further. What all this is leading up to is this single line of code that copies the data between the source mapping and the destination mapping. This is the heart of the program. Finally, the msync call ensures that the changes to the destination mapping are flushed back out to the file. This isn't strictly necessary here because as the program terminates the mappings will be removed and the contents implicitly flushed, but it's good practice. If you'd like a picture to make clear what's going on, we start off with an input file, foo. We mmap it into memory, capturing the address of the map block in src. Similarly we have the output file bar, we mmap that into memory capturing the address of the map block in dst. So these two shaded rectangles represent the in-memory buffers. Then we do a mem copy between the two buffers and finally we do an msync to push the destination buffer back out to the file.